Hello everyone and welcome to this video tutorial from visualnights.com. In this video tutorial I'm going to show you how you can create reactor wheels inside 3D Max 2010. You can apply this tutorial or your knowledge you've learned in this tutorial in older versions of 3D Max, at least far as I know back to 3ds Max 9. I'll show you a short example of what I mean exactly. This is what's going to be happening in this tutorial. We have this small vehicle, a small box with four wheels and it's going to ride along this road and at the end there's this small jumping where it jumps off. You can download this starting scene and also the ending scene from visualnights.com if you want. Let's get started. I'm going to delete first these objects here because we don't need them anymore. And let's create our vehicle. We make a small box. I have auto grid uh, selected. Very good. And we'll want to drag that a little bit higher. And then we're going to make some wheels. We're using the cylinder form for this. Like that. Hold shift key to copy your object. Now we want to you know, pressing T for top view. And then holding control to select both of them and then pressing shift again to copy them. And to move these a little bit away from the car itself, from the body itself. Going over to perspective view. And here we have actually our little car. It isn't much, but it'll show you pretty much how this wheeling thing works. Alright, now we need to create something from Reactor. To do that, you need the Reactor menu. Now I'll use the following. I press on Customize, Show User Interface, and then I click on Show Floating Toolbars. And then here we have our Reactor Toolbar. I'm going to drag that a little bit beneath the normal toolbar and so it gets uh, lined in into the normal background. I'm going to close all these toolbars. Now we have the reactor toolbar here ready for us. Click on create rigid body collection. Alright. And as you can see here when you go to the modifier tab you have this option here and we're going to add all these objects we've created, except the rigid body collection itself. Select them all and they are added to the rigid body collection. Right. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to create wheel constraints for every wheel. Create a car wheel constraint. That's the button you need. And create four of them. Select one of the constraints, click on modify, and then you have these options here. We want a parent because we're going to use our body box as a parent. So click on none next to parent. There you can see box one. And our child is one of the wheels. And, and as you can see the wheel constraint is placed at the wheel. We're going to repeat this step for every wheel. Alright. Next thing we need to create is a constraint solver. A constraint solver is always neat when you have some kind of constraint like a wheel or a hinge for a door or like when you create a rigid body collection from for ragdolls or something like that. Click on the modify tab again. First we need to specify the rigid body collection. Click on none and click on the rigid body collection. As you can see it's added here. And then you click on add. And in this menu only constraints that are being created from this menu out are being shown here in this menu. I'm going to select them all and they are being added in the um, constraint solver collection. Okay, that's done. Now the basic setup for the scene is ready. We're going to set up some properties now. Select your box from the vehicle itself and click on the property, property editor. We're going to set a relatively high mass to this body, like 100, and we're going to leave it on mesh convex hull. Now select all of the wheels by holding the control key 
open the property editor again and we're going to set the mass for the wheels to 20 and leave it on mesh convex hull. Now we also need to set something up for this road because the road isn't moving we can leave the mass to zero but we want to change it to a concave mesh because we're not moving this object. That is done. Let's see if I'm not forgetting anything. No, I don't think so. Now go to the Utilities panel, click on Reactor if you haven't done so already, and click on Preview and Animation. We're going to set the starting frame to 10. I'm going to show you why we're doing that. We have this box here, and of, uh, well, we have this box from our vehicle, and we want to simulate a moving uh, vehicle. Now, what we need to do here is we want to set a movement for our car. So, we're going to turn on Auto Key, and we're going to place the slider to frame 20, and we're going to move our entire object to the end of the road. And so you have this very short animation from a vehicle moving. Now what we want to do with Reactor is that when Reactor really starts with building up its physics, it wants to catch the speed of the car at frame 10. And that speed is called momentum, because it's right there, it's already moving. I also want to go to Havoc World 1 here. I want to set up some very simple things here. I want to show you. Um, the collision tolerance is really important. I need a very low because that way my tutorial works best. And I've set it to 47. It's a bit on much gone. Let's set it to 0 0.5. And this is just my uh, default value for this. All right. Now let's see if the reactor actually does something. We have this scene here. I want to press play. And there goes our car. Once again, you can download this sample scene from our website, visualnights.com. Um, you can also download the starting scene so you don't have to create the car or the road itself. Well, that's it for this tutorial. I hope to see you again. And if you have any questions, uh, just ask them on our website or just on YouTube. Goodbye.